brief thought today on the power and place for lying to ourselves. Now, I'm probably kind of overstating that. Really, it's just this role of when our expectations for something are sort of helped as a way to move us to do it. And so the first thing that comes to mind and, and what really inspired this today is, you know, yesterday's video, I mentioned how I've been doing tons and tons of editing, right? I've got like this pile of 45, 50 messages to work on. And I've, I've chewed my way through most of it. Like I'm down to like the last, I think, eight to edit them I mentioned. And uh, so I mentioned in a tweet about it, but uh, another way I've been using a low-tech solution to keep track of that, to make it more tangible, because it just, it's such a slow process. There's so much stuff there to work through, is I took 45 marbles, there's more than that in here, put them in a cup, and I've been taking them out each time I finish, so I can just see the tangible progress, right, when I finish one of these. And each time I do that, I've got this thing where I use the same technique I use for my productivity audiobook, self-command, to give myself a time target for when I'm trying to do it by. You know, I'll, I'll finish message 21 before uh, 3.30 or something. And what I've observed is that the time that I tell myself I'm going to do it in, even now that I'm through 40 or however many I've done editing so far, I still tell myself it's going to take less time than it does. I, I, I don't even adjust the estimate. And I know I, I'm not, you know, there's these two different layers at which we're kind of working with ourselves as our manager and as our person who's sort of following the instructions. And each time I set myself that time goal, I know that it's a little implausible to, to it's not, I'll say, I'll give myself 45 minutes or an hour. And realistically, it's like at least 90 minutes, sometimes a couple hours, depending on the, how long the message is, sometimes longer. And in the process, it's just something where it reminds me of this old message I brought up in the Productivity Book 2 about how a lot of entrepreneurs, if you ask them if they knew what they actually had to do to get where they are today, would they have done it? You know, if they could have more accurately assessed up front just the amount of work it was going to take. And a lot of people will frankly say no. Like they're grateful that they got themselves in the situation. They're happy to be where they're at. But, but you know, truth be told, if they had actually had a purely realistic assessment of the amount of work and time it'd take and what it would get for them, they might not do it. And we see this effect in various ways, right? So when I'm working with my project leads and home team on planning out their project trellos and they have a pitch in mind, there's a game concept they're working on, they're building out their weekly schedule. There's a balance between, obviously, part of trying to figure is how to allocate that effort and time, how to do things that will add up meaningfully over months of effort of just an evening or two here or there kind of, kind of pace. But then in the process, we always have more in those schedules than we are able to fit. And the same thing happens to me when I'm doing my trellos of, you know, more bosses that we're going to have time for, more characters we have time for, more, more levels. And there's some of that that is a little bit of pushing ourselves, right? I, I, it's, it's this old rule of if you can aim for a goal and get at least 85, 90% of it, at least you know that you are really maximizing what you could do versus if you nail 100% of it, who knows, right? How, how much more you might have been able to fit in. Some of it's that. Some of the things also this is this degree to which we can sometimes... As we go, be a little more selective. Having all those possible plans lets us narrow down as we go. What's the highest value thing for us to do? What's the best way for us to use this time? And and even again, in these cases where like we give ourselves a time goal that, well, I'd like to have this done by an hour or something. Helps us get into it in the same kind of way as when someone is new to a lot of activities, new to playing music, new to doing art, new to uh, a sport, playing games, working on games, whatever. It can help us to, to, to trick ourselves a little bit. And again, I kind of jokingly lie to ourselves, but, but just to, to get a little hyped about how easy it's going to be, how fun it's going to be, how well it's going to go, the reality is going to be somewhere in the middle. Right? There's, not, there's not a person out there who's doing some sort of sport who didn't at least envision these sort of uh, dream scenarios of how it might go. And there's, some, there's inevitably there's difficulties, there's challenges, obstacles, things get real, uh, stuff comes out in a lot of gray area, trade-offs, compromise, and so on. But the alternative is not doing it, right? The alternative is, is to, to get too bitter or afraid or bound up on the detail before you get to it. And, and, and it becomes too easy to talk ourselves out of things. And so part of the process of talking ourselves into things, which is a useful skill, and, and it's, you know, it's, again, there's a weird element there, uh, but it can feel like, am I manipulating my, myself? And really, we're steering. Right? We're trying to figure out what are the messages we have to play internally? What are the things we have to tell ourselves to do the things that we mean to do that in the long run we'll be glad we did? And sometimes it does involve a little bit of telling ourselves it's going to be easier than it's going to be. It's going to go smoother than we expect. It's going to take less time than it does. It's going to include more than we'll be able to fit in. 
And then what you get out of that, right, is this work that exists, this thing in the universe, this game, this book, this whatever it is you're producing, that if you hadn't set out to do more than you were able to do, wouldn't exist at all, and that it's much better existing in the world imperfectly or in a slightly raw state at certain stages or something than it would have been otherwise. The sequence that I'm working on, and so, you know, like I say, I wrote a ton of messages, I've got a handful more, I've got some edit and so on. Ton of work, about 200 pages of good material. So I literally like writing another book this year has been sort of one of my content projects each year, right? I'm trying to kind of produce another piece of content. We got like my audio book and my other audio book and my textbook and my video course. And this year it's been this sequence, the gamedevtraining.com stuff. And in writing that, in the earlier drafts, like there were, I knew that there were some rough spots. There were some bits and pieces I had to go back and iterate and clean up. And I've done those, most of those now since. But it's it's partly it's, it's trying to set a goal for what is there worth doing in the flawed way we can do it and the way we can fit it in the way that we can make it happen. That's worth going back and improving upon that's going to have been high enough value to others, to ourselves, to to documenting our thoughts or getting things off our chest or trying things out or, or sharing value or whatever objective is to, to if, if nothing else try out the shoe and figure out if we like doing something. Sometimes that's part of the, the value of an exercise, right? Is we're just trying to size up. Do I want to do more of this thing? And it's just trying to figure out, okay, what is it worth doing at all to then be able to go back and improve? Because oftentimes the problems that we can do perfectly are are so small, so contrived, so so minor, right? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a very... Uh, like if it's a mechanical task, if it's a very simple, straightforward, I know exactly what to do. I've done it before. I've done it a hundred times before. You're not going to get the kind of learning, stretching, growth, expression. It's not going outside what you've seen or done before. And so in order to keep growing and keep doing that stuff, I think we have to kind of get out of our head of only doing what we can exactly estimate, of only doing what we can do 100%. And that's what lets us keep pushing at that boundary. I think a lot of the challenges that we have of grown-ups trying to keep ourselves learning and doing new things in a way that seemed easier when we were kids is probably just a side effect of when we're kids we're not even trying to estimate difficulty of things we're not even trying to account for that we we're not good at anything yet we're, we're literally not good at anything yet and so without knowing what expertise looks like or feels like because we're not professional level at anything as children then we don't have this comparison point. So when we try to wade into something new, we can feel the difference of how much less comfortable we are there. We don't have anywhere else to retreat of the thing that we've done for decades so that we know we're better at it. Whereas it gets harder as we get better at some things. And so that's where, again, I think it helps us to continue to play these little games with ourselves. And, and, and I think a way that helps me process it a little internally, because I used to struggle with this a lot, because I really, I don't know, I, I obviously I'm kind of an engineer at heart certain production mindset from the roles that I've had in teams. And I like to feel like I'm grounded in reality and tracking things accurately and giving good estimates and so on. A way I've been trying to look at it, right? So we've got uh, one of our project leads, Jeremiah. I, I love his attitude about things. He's a team lead in his workplace. In addition, been team lead in home team a couple times, or soon to be a couple times, I suppose. But he's uh, he's got this kind of like a cheerleader mentality of this is going to be great. This is going to go great. We're going to have a good time. You know, every time you ask him, hey, how are you doing? His answer is like, live in the dream or it's just been it's been a great time and uh things are going great and and it's almost like there's this playful element if you can tell that there's probably probably more to it right it's not necessarily going to be that easy or that playful but that energy that enthusiasm brought into it uh has a real value has a real substantial difference in helping us bring ourselves to it in a way that if instead we just kind of again look at the schedule look at the amount of work to be done look at the challenges involved it's real easy to talk ourselves out of stuff and as life's a lot more fun, we find a way to maybe talk ourselves into some stuff. Because again, I, I've, I've observed in myself now for dozens <laughs> of these editing things where I will just straight up put a time to myself on my target that I know is implausible to fit into. But it gets me going. It gets me into there. It gets me partway through that process. I'm reminded, I might have mentioned some of the older videos because this is the thing I like to go back to where a bit of a tale here being spun of there's this really tall building down the street from where I went to college called the Cathedral of Learning. It's actually part of the inspiration for Gotham City, I believe, and Batman. It's this like enormous gothic style, but skyscraper. It's, it's a wild building. But when they were constructing it, they had sort of started some of the decoration up on the higher floors before they built some of the lower detailing in, in a way that got them far enough along 
that they had to get more funding to finish the project and that couldn't be backed out of. Whereas if they had started from the bottom and just kind of gone up, there was concerns they might have to cut short of what they're going for on the top. And this sort of thing where we can get ourselves far enough into it, right? So even if it doesn't take me just an hour to get through one of these, well, once I'm an hour deep into it and I'm most of the way through it, it's much easier to then negotiate with myself a little bit like, well, I could put another 15, 20, 30 minutes on this. May as well finish it up so I can be at a better stopping point before I go back to other things. I saw the same trick happening when, again, not even a trick, dynamic happening, where from both the developer side and publisher side, when I was doing professional game development through publishers now so many years ago, where what we'd go back and forth on, on what they would ask and what I would ask in terms of budget and so on, would constantly be this stretch on what they could get out of it and what I could get out of it. And, and that interplay is not either side manipulating the other, lying to the other, really. It's just an exercise in, the, in that, that pushing against one another to find, uh, I don't know, how much we can get done that wouldn't get done otherwise. And uh, like I say, keep being as close to something where we, it just becomes easier to want to try to put that additional little extra on there. And so sometimes in our time targets and our ambition targets and our aims, it can be nice to uh, not even necessarily try to calculate for that but to account for that effect in ourselves and to, to know full well what we're doing when we set a goal and hit 85% of it, that that's 85% of a thing that wouldn't have existed if we hadn't set that goal the way we did. You know, if we'd, if we'd aimed instead lower, we'd got 85% of that anyway. Anyway, that's it for the day. I'll, I'll leave you be. Thanks for following along. Of course, again, if you haven't signed up for game.training.com, I think you should. And uh, yeah, catch another day. Thanks for being here.